Hello, today's first lecture is on introduction to man-made fibers. So, so let us look at um, the things that are around us and uh, one would be surprised to know that most of them are polymers. So let us um, look into them. The products, devices and components that we purchase and use are all made up of uh, materials. And solids that we use may be subclassified as metal, ceramics or polymers. So polymers may be natural or synthetic. Almost all textile fibers are polymers. Some examples of natural polymers are cotton, wool, silk, jute, etc. Whereas polyester, polyamides, polyolefins, etc. are examples of synthetic polymers that can be converted into fibers. So some there are some non-polymeric uh, materials also uh, which are man-made and inorganic fibers such as carbon, glass, metallic and ceramic fibers possess several advantageous properties like some of them may have excellent mechanical properties, some of them may have very high or very low electrical properties, uh, thermal conductivities are higher, excellent heat and chemical resistance um, may be better in these non-polymeric uh, fibers. Uh, and these properties are not offered by ordinary polymeric fibers. So, uh, what are the factors uh, that uh, that decide the properties of a of any particular fiber? Man-made fiber uh, properties are determined by a variety of reasons, which are considered at three different levels. So, broadly um, subclassified, one can say uh, that these properties depend on uh, on these three things. That is the chemical structure of the polymer itself, uh, the fine structure and the gross morphology. We shall see what this means one by one. Um, so chemical structure means that the plastics are polymers which are derived from uh, petroleum products and most of these polymers are made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Polymers that contain hydrogen and carbon atoms are called hydrocarbons. So one can see in the image here, there are uh, they are classified as aliphatic and aromatic. So let us see what they are, what is meant by that. Carbon atoms can form four single bonds with four other atoms. If the carbon atoms in a polymer are bound to four other atoms, the polymer is referred to as a saturated uh, hydrocarbon. So in the aliphatic type, one can see that each carbon atom is connected to three hydrogen and it has one bond with another carbon atom. So it, each carbon atom has, is fully uh, saturated and this type of a hydrocarbon is called as a saturated hydrocarbon. So now let us look at the other um, uh, uh, formulas in the image that is given over here. If on the other hand the carbon atom is not bound to four other atoms, it will typically form a double or a triple bond as shown in the other three cases um, as needed with other carbon atoms. In this case the polymer is referred to as a unsaturated hydrocarbon. This distinction is important as unsaturated polymers are generally unstable and are more reactive. So if it is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, one will usually find that they are generally unstable and they are more reactive also. So uh, it's um, better to know what kind of hydrocarbon we are dealing with. So different types of polymers are produced when the hydrogen atoms are substituted for other atoms or molecules called functional groups. So, uh, when we substitute uh, hydrogen atoms with some group of um, uh, molecules or functional groups, then the properties of that polymer changes. So, examples of functional groups are hydroxyl, carboxyl, amides and aldehydes. So, the type of functional group attached to the hydrocarbon influences the property of the entire polymer. The chemical structure influences chemical reactivity, moisture absorption, diability, swelling properties, physical properties of the fiber. So on the next level, now we look at what the fine structure is, what do we mean by that and how it affects uh, man-made fibers uh, or the fiber properties. A polymer therefore is a series of long chain molecules composed into a complex arrangement to make a solid. There are two possible arrangements of the molecular chains. They are either crystalline when they arrange themselves neatly to have a long range order or they are amorphous and randomly packed with no discernible order. So uh, for the molecular chains within the uh, polymer, one can have either crystalline regions where they are uh, neatly arranged or they may be amorphous um, and normally any polymer will contain both these regions crystalline as well as amorphous 
and therefore they are called as semi crystalline so as one can see in this diagram shown here one molecular chain passes through many crystalline regions as well as amorphous regions so um, in a fiber uh, this can happen um while uh, so um, just to give a parallel example one can imagine the molecular chains to be fibers uh, maybe within a sliver and uh, one can imagine that if the fiber is long enough it can pass through various um, arranged uh, well arranged neatly arranged regions as well as um, completely randomly packed regions while a polymer can be completely amorphous it will never be completely crystalline but instead will also have regions that are partially amorphous these structures are therefore referred to as semi crystalline so um, the degree of crystallinity may range from completely amorphous to up to 95% crystalline polymers with molecular chains that have a large irregularity with respect to attached functional groups find it difficult to arrange into an orderly fashion and therefore favor the formation of an amorphous structure the fine structure that is the molecular organization or arrangement of the molecules within the fiber influences physical properties as well as chemical properties so at the uh, primary level the chemical structure of the molecular uh, chain will decide the properties of the fiber at a second level uh, the fine structure that is how they how the molecular chains are arranged or organized will decide the fiber properties and at the next or the third level it's the gross morphology that is uh, gross morphology means fiber surface or the cross section or the features that are there on the surface which are larger than 0.3 micrometer uh, which are observable by a normal optical microscope will also influence certain properties so if one uh, for example if one simply changes the cross section of the polymer if all the uh, the polymer is the same in all these uh, cross sectional shapes still there will be uh, one will find that the properties change from one shape to the other because just simply because we have changed the morphology of this um, polymer the way it has been shaped and uh, you one can see change in the properties in terms of say appearance feel and performance properties of fibers made by using such fibers some physical properties of the fibers also change because of this um, um, example like uh, cross sectional shape changes or if we are to add certain features on the surface of the fiber again one may see some changes for example this is a hollow fiber or a triangular cross section fiber or a, a kidney bean shaped or maybe this square shaped with hollows inside all these uh, various shapes will affect certain physical properties also so with this we come to the end of this uh, session where we saw how man made fibers are affected at three different levels that is the chemical structure of the molecular chain the arrangement of the molecular chain as well as finally the um uh, the morphological changes that is the uh, shape etc or the surface of the fiber uh, may bring about a change in the properties of the final man made fiber so with this we end the session today thank you